Are you looking for something you can play against 1d4 that is very exciting, really fun to play, and also gives you the opportunity to win really quickly? Well, maybe you want to check out the Fajarowitz Gambit. This is something you can play against d4. You play knight f6, and after c4, you play e5. This is the Budapest Gambit, only after the recapture, instead of playing the main plan, which is knight to g4, with some ideas of potentially regaining this e-pawn, you are going to play instead knight to e4, and this is a very ferocious gambit. Uh, it's something where black is basically saying, I don't even want to try to regain that pawn. I'm just going to be playing for activity at all costs. I'm going to rely on the dynamics of the position. I'm going to make interesting, complicated positions where imagination will go really far, and a creative player might be able to come up with all sorts of interesting ideas that lead to a lot of fun. And we're going to be deep diving into this one, not so much into the theory, but what I've actually decided to do for this video is I'm going to show you a bunch of miniatures. There are just so many traps, some that people might know, like the amazing mind-blowing queen trap. If you've never seen it, it's going to blow your mind. Uh, and there are all sorts of different little traps. I've decided to kind of organize it this way rather than deep diving too much into the theory side of things. But I do want to do a basic brief overview before we go into these games and before I show you all seven of these really quick wins by Black. And what I do want to say about this opening is knight to e4 is a, a very annoying move for a player to face, especially if they don't have anything in mind against it, because uh, the knight is doing really well. I mean, not only might we have tactical threats against f2 at some point, but we're also basically preventing white from doing a natural move such as knight to c3. Because if you wanted to play this move now or in the next couple of moves, in addition to being able to play bishop to b4, pinning your knight, we're always going to have the option of taking this, doubling your pawns. Now you got doubled pawns. You got an isolated a pawn. In the end game, we'll always have targets. And in a position like this, even if we somehow don't win this e pawn back, we're always going to have some sort of compensation here due to the shattered structure uh, on the white queen side. So because of this reason, white needs to come up with a better plan in this position. And basically, there are two main options. Um, at the top level, you can see that there's basically two very popular choices that don't directly deal with this knight, at least on the first move. And that would be knight to f3. This is by far the most principled move. It's the most logical piece that you want to develop. But you will notice there's also a3, which scores very well for white. This is often touted as the actual antidote against the Fajarowitz. It's probably what I would recommend if you're playing with white. It's this move a3, which takes this bishop b4 out of the equation. And we're going to be seeing that these are the two most popular moves. So when we begin our, our studies of the miniatures, we'll go a little bit more into the theory and we'll show you some games in which these happen. But there's also another subset of moves that I kind of think of as undermining moves. Any move white might play that tries to remove this e4 knight immediately. These kinds of moves would be something like knight to d2, just kind of going in order of what's most popular. That's an attempt to resolve the issue of the knight being on e4 right away. There's also queen to c2. This is just attacking the knight directly. And then there's a variety of other queen moves. The queen can go to d4, d5, uh, and do something to try to make the knight move away. Uh, there is another line that is not as popular in the master database. I don't think it's ever been played, but you might see beginners play. Um, we know knight c3 is a little bit of a mistake, but another way of trying to dislodge the knight that would end very poorly for white would be the move f3. And you probably already can see some hints as to why this <laughs> might be wrong. If you have any experience with crushing people that have played f3, you'll know that queen h4 is uh, a huge piece to this puzzle. But there's actually a stronger move, so you may want to think about it uh, for a minute, but I'm going to spoil this and get to the even better stuff. Uh, bishop to b4 is an even better move shutting the door this is forcing white to put something in the way uh, of the king so that there's no escape you'll see why that's important in just a minute but now after queen to h4 you can see there's only one way to escape the check and now white is just basically doomed because after g3 we are taking here and if you take back immediately, this is just a checkmate. You can also imagine that white might try something uh, a little bit different in this position, realizing there's no time to even grab this knight. You can imagine them taking on b4, but this also is devastating for white, knight to e4. And the king has nowhere to run, so this also would be a checkmate. So you can kind of get some ideas that it's a little bit difficult for white to come up with a good plan, but let's jump right into the games and see kind of what is going on here. So as black, 
Fajarowitz Gambit. Here it is. It's on the board. And we're going to begin with a game where White played the most common move, Knight to F3, but then fell for one of the most epic traps <laughs> of all time, really. In, in any opening, this is kind of like a, a mega behemoth trap. And before we dive into it, I do want to briefly explain that there are a couple different moves here that could be played. I'll even put on the Lee Chess database so you can kind of see what amateur players uh, will tend to fall for. But the basic ideas are you can play the most solid line, bishop to b4. This is the way that Stockfish would play. There's d6, which is a move where you're going to be giving up a pawn. Uh, and then there's this move b6, which was played in the game. And we'll see the, the monster trap that you might be setting for white. And then there's a variety of other moves. So black actually, this is a really flexible opening where you have a lot of opportunities to freestyle and do it your own way. So if you're into that, this is kind of a, a good opening for you. Uh, before we dive into b6 and take a look at, at some of these traps, I do want to point out that this is what Stockfish would recommend. This is the most solid way for black to play. And it does immediately ask white a question. And you'll see why some players would like to play a3 just to avoid this whole mess, because now white already needs to decide, are you going to put a knight in front of your bishop? Or are you going to put a bishop on d2? And the plan for black is basically the same after either one of these. Uh, you are going to now be capturing this. And after the knight takes, you are going to go about trying to win this e5 pawn. And you're almost certain to be able to do it. After knight to c6, for example, you can imagine a3 being played. If they don't play a3, if they play e3, you just go about trying to win back this pawn. But if they take it, you'll go here, you'll play queen to e7, and all we're really trying to do is win back this e-pawn. So if the queen goes to c3, this would be another attempt by white to try to hold on to this pawn for as long as possible. You can imagine castling e3, an eventual rook to e8, and we're going to be able to win back this pawn. Now, you can. this is like the most solid way to play. This maybe is not why you're playing the Fajarowitz Gambit. Maybe white is playing this, hoping for some occasion where you get some position like this. White can maybe argue my structure is slightly better, or my chances of a minority attack are slightly better, uh, but this is probably not objectively the best try by White to try to win this game or punish this gambit. Uh, but maybe this is not why you play the Fajarowitz. So also, I just want to quickly point out that if, instead of Bishop, they go with the Knight, it's basically the same thing. Uh, we can at some point go here, and then whenever we're ever asked, maybe they play e3 and just ignore things for a little bit longer. But whenever we're asked, we'll go in for something like this. We'll go here. We will eventually win it. Even if you go here, we, we castle, uh, we play rook e8, and we eventually will win back this pawn. So, boom. We're going to take this on the next move. Uh, that's fine. That's an okay variation for black. But... It's probably not why you are playing this. And d6 is something we're going to come back and look at. d6 is an important option just to be aware of. If they do recapture, you take back. And basically your point in a line like this is, hey, I'm going to develop pieces very quickly. Queen goes to e7, maybe to f6, maybe I castle queenside, maybe I get some sort of an attack. We're going to be looking at lines where this happens uh, in the future. But there's also... Yeah, this line that's really hard to resist when you know it exists. <laughs> and it's this move, pawn to b6. And now this is going to be the game uh, that we are checking out right now. And b6 seems to be sensible. It's normal enough uh, in this structure to play b6, bishop to b7. But it does look like potentially black has made a grave error. And you can imagine, especially if a low-rated player were to play this, you'd be like, uh oh, yeah, they just blundered. Queen to d5. And white is already excited. White is thinking, I'm going to win this game. And then you can play this remarkable move, bishop to b7. And now white's got to slow down a little bit because you're now about to enter into the black position. There's this amazing move. You sacrifice the bishop. White takes. And now knight to c6. And immediately you realize the door is closing in on the white queen. Black now is ready to play knight to c5. <laughs> and this would simply trap the queen. Uh, so if like some random move, knight to c5, the queen has nowhere to go and black wins. So uh, what what would you do here as white? I mean, I think most people would play queen to a6, and your idea is you're going to run away. So now if black plays knight to c5, you are going to be able to run away. And even though the queen enters the diagonal with the bishop, there's really not a great way to take advantage of the situation as black. So you do need to be a little bit more clever and come up with a slightly better move in this game. And this is what happened in this game. How are we going to make sure that we keep the a3 square defended when we play knight to c5? 
Well, black came up with bishop to b4. So you throw this check in so that after white blocks with something, now you can play knight to c5, and the queen is very close to being trapped. With the bishop here on b4, now there's no opportunity to run to a6. You still have the b5 square, and black needs to be careful for one more move. Uh, and that is you need to trade right away. It looks like you're about to play a6 and trap the queen. However, if you do do this right away, uh, you're at least giving white the option of grabbing a couple pieces. And remarkably, it would actually be white that is up material in this position. But if you do take heed, get rid of the bishop and only then play a6, white will take a look around and the queen is actually <laughs> trapped. This is one of the, the most terrific traps that you can play in this game so it's an idea worth knowing for both sides you play b6 and if they come in you're going to be able to win the queen beautiful stuff now let's continue our investigation with a, another game uh this is another fajarowitz gambit but this time let's take a look at b uh, a3 the most popular move sorry this is a3 potentially the antidote against the Fajarowitz. And I wanted to show this one because this is another B6 opening. <laughs> and let's take a look at what happened here. White played queen to C2. It's the same thing if they do decide to come in, you play bishop to B7. But what if white is a little bit more cunning? Well, I like this game too because there was another trap that black came up with in this game. After bishop to B7, knight to C3, uh, white has kind of solved the issue of how are you going to deal with this guy by playing a3, not letting us pin, by putting the queen here, keeping as much pressure on the knight. We're basically forced to exchange. But now black played a very cunning move in this position and set a very nice little trap, one that I think would be really easy for an opponent to fall for. And you can see by the ratings, these are actually relatively decent players in a long standard tournament game. And after a5 which looks like, okay, just a nice, solid, prophylactic move. Maybe white was thinking of playing b4, getting the bishop on this diagonal. So, you know, I'll just play a5 now. I'll shut that down. Well, after knight to f3, white got a little bit of a wake-up call here, and black played an absolutely tremendous move. Can you spot the winning move here for black? And I'm going to go pretty quickly, so if you need more time, always just make sure you pause your video. But here black played bishop to b4 and this is the move that just wins on the spot it's tremendous you have pinned the queen to the king um i guess skewering the queen to the king and most importantly you cannot take back with this pawn because now after a takes b4 not only are we attacking the queen but we've opened up the a file so now we should be winning material no matter what happens so if the queen takes here we grab this rook and white not only is down material but is also in uh, tremendously bad shape here having to try to defend this position so a fantastic little trap keep a pawn on a5 and hit him with bishop to b4 a really cool one skewering the pieces okay now this one is one of the most popular hopefully you didn't see it one of the most popular traps uh that i do want to highlight and this is something that occurs uh, in this position. And the reason I put this one in, this one is uh, probably the shortest game. I believe this is a six move trap right here. And it's also one of the oldest examples of this trap happening. And then I also want to show you the more common way that this trap might occur that actually is kind of cool. It's one of the traps that most people do tend to fall for when you look in the database. A3, the best move by white. And now after D6, we had kind of mentioned that uh, B6 was an option. Here we're going to take a look at this move D6, which has this idea that if they do recapture right away, we're taking back and we're going to prioritize development. This is just a normal gambit. We're down upon. That's cool. Uh, but you do have to be a little bit careful here with white. There is already a little bit of a trap. And in this game, the opponent played g3. We'll also take a look at what happens if they play knight f3. That would be the most popular move. But can you spot the winning move here already? This is already uh, a mistake by white. Now, the winning move is knight takes f2. And suddenly, you can see what is going on. Uh, we have forked the queen and the rook. And if white does decide to recapture, we now see that the queens are in alignment. So bishop takes g3 is the winning move. After white takes back, we take the queen and we win the game. Now, what's really the most incredible about this, at least in my <laughs> observation, is if we run back this entire game in the database, this is the Fajarowitz Gambit, a3, great move. d6, you can see that's the most popular move. Um, 
If they take with the pawn, they're almost certainly going to lose. So knight f3 is what most players will play. There's 6,000 games. Uh, over 1,000 of them have taken right away. About 2,000 people will play knight f3, and everyone else will just play something totally different. But if they do take this pawn, they are almost certainly going to lose if they just follow the line. Because after bishop takes, it goes knight f3. And you can see this is 856 games out of 1,700. So about half of the people will fall for this if you do go in for this. It's the same exact thing. Knight takes f2, and if king takes bishop g3, uh-oh, king can't even run back to protect the queen. So whatever you take with, you lose a queen. Um, this is a great one to know. If you play the d6 line, this is an important one to know because this is one of the ones that most people will end up falling for. Now this one. This game is not actually a miniature. This is the only kind of longer game that I kept in here. But this is actually the game that inspired me to make this entire lecture. I was just watching this at night. I was just going through some Fajarowitz games and I was playing Guess the Move on my phone. And when I saw this game, I was like, oh my gosh, this is tremendous. And it kind of, it led me to make this entire video. Now, these ratings here may not be accurate. This is Dos Hermanas. This is the computer chess tournament. Uh, this was a game played in 2003, but some very strong players. And you can see white is even the higher rated opponent in this position. And white did play the move, pawn to a3, best move for white. Fantastic. Uh, black played knight to c6. Obviously, d6 was the, the main move, potentially, but whatever. This gets us there. And black played the line with d6, where you sack a pawn, you get this out. And what I love about this game is white played absolutely normal. White just took the pawn and then played the most logical, normal developing moves you could ever play and then immediately got punished for it. So you're going to see exactly what I mean. Uh, knight to d2, a very logical move, trying to undermine this knight. And black needs to continue to develop to keep the pressure on. What you want to do is you're playing very dynamically. You are down a pawn. You develop your pieces as quickly as possible. Queen to f... Uh, sorry, bishop to f5 with the idea that next you can put your queen somewhere, either e7 or f6. You can castle queenside very quickly, and you can play for some sort of initiative in the middle game. White did decide to take. Black took back. And after e3, white is just saying, you know what, I'm going to develop this bishop, maybe to e2, maybe to d3. I'm going to get castled and play the game from there. Now comes queen to e7, bishop to e2, castles long and now black has made a threat so black has managed to castle first black has uh all of the minor pieces out already and now we are threatening bishop to b4 in order to potentially win this queen so white has to waste yet another turn doing something with this queen and in the game queen to a4 is what was played putting the queen on a safe square although she's not necessarily doing too too much uh on this diagonal we're not terribly worried about what's happening at least not yet and when watching this i was i got to this position i'm lying in bed on my phone and i'm like all right i'm playing guess the move i'm like it feels good but how is black going to get an attack here and when i saw what black came up with i got really excited black played a fantastic move here pawn to g5 this is how you continue to get the initiative and you know what we're just going to play pawn to g4 next we're going to kick your knight away and potentially reveal an attack on this g-pawn. So white has to already do something in order to save this pawn. So white played what I guess would be the most normal, most logical thing that you would come up with. You know, you don't have time. For example, like let me just play some random attacking move on the other side. We'll be playing g4. This is not what happened in the game. And you can't go here because of the queen. You'll have to go back. But then the g-pawn, this is what I'm kind of talking about. This is one of the issues for white. So instead of playing b4 or something, white has to take the time to defend the g-pawn and played castles. Now this king is the one that's defending the g-pawn. But now black played an amazing combination. And another thing that was really cool, you can think about what black should be playing here, is when I put this on my phone engine at the end of the game, the computer didn't see it. It was a version of Stockfish. It was obviously for mobile, so not like the strongest version of Stockfish of all time, but it couldn't find it. So can you come up with uh, the winning attack that my phone didn't come up with <laughs> uh, from this position? It starts logically with g4, knight to d2, but okay, now what? How do you continue the attack? And the way to do it is with a remarkable sacrifice. Bishop takes h2, king takes, queen h4, king goes back, and now you have to continue. Uh, you know, you've gone in for it, you've sacrificed an entire piece, but where is the mate? And it's actually a double bishop sacrifice. 
Bishop takes g2. So even though you defended g2, I'm going to take it anyway. And after you take back, I actually am going to be a lot quicker getting some of these pieces into the attack. And it's remarkable. You're up, you know, well, two bishops, because I sacrificed two bishops. But all of your pieces are over on the other side of the board. So uh, queen check, king goes back, g6, uh, g3, sorry. And suddenly, white is faced with this checkmating attack. And it looks like black is just going to crash through. Knight f3 played, trying to defend the h2 square. And now comes rook to g8, and another piece enters the attack. Uh, white played e4, like whatever. White is kind of paralyzed, just waiting to see if, if death will come. Uh, tries to play e4, nothing really happening. And the only mar on this otherwise perfect, amazing attacking game is black could have played uh, pawn to g2 in this position, and you're either going to take this with discovered checkmate, or you're going to be playing this move on the next move. Uh, but instead, black did decide to take this thing, which also leads to mate just yeah, marginally slower. After this check, the king ran to e3. If you go back, there's going to be a checkmating attack after here. All you can really do is block. You can see the king getting trapped in. And this rook is playing a powerful part in this attack. He's actually blocking off uh, the king from running away. And instead, we saw after queen to h6, white resigned. Uh, before playing it out, obviously, you could give away a little bit of stuff. Look how nice this rook is. All of the pieces are very well coordinated. Uh, you'd have to play here, but then I'm guessing the checkmate is here followed by like here looks like uh, a mate that could have been delivered in the game. So a fantastic one. And I thought like white really just played model chess. You just develop the pieces. You take the pawn, you develop the pieces, you get castled. But in this game, he ended up just getting destroyed. Here's another game. Uh, let's see. We got the Fajarowitz Gambit. And this time we are now going to branch out into what happens when the opponent plays queen to c2. Now this would be one of the more popular ways of... Uh, trying to undermine this knight. So we're no longer discussing what happens on the two most popular moves. What happens if white just decides to try to get rid of this knight? Well, there was another amazing game that happened in this position, and it occurred after d5. It is worth pointing out that, again, you always have options as black. There's always a lot of different ways that you can play it. Bishop to b4 would be the more popular way of continuing from this position. And again, you're likely to get a more solid position where your main goal is just to win back this e-pawn. This is always the computer-recommended way to continue. It's always the most solid, but it's not necessarily the most exciting. But obviously, you'll get some position very similar to what we've seen already. You play knight to c6. Hey, I just want to get this pawn. You defend it. I attack it. If you play e3, I get to take this pawn. If you play here, you know, we'll trade some stuff and eventually we'll get a position where I'm able to win the pawn back and we can play a dry position like this where, well, I mean, white can say like I'm marginally better or something, but whatever. There is another option, a gambity option available to you against the queen to c2 line. And it's this move, which actually scores really well for black. And it's the move pawn to d5. And this gives white all sorts of opportunities to... Uh, take this pawn, because obviously now we can take on Passant, we can take this guy. Um, but the main point for black is we are going to be developing our bishop as quickly as possible. Bishop to f5 is our next move, some combination of bishop to b4. I don't care, take as many of the pawns as you want, I'm going to develop my pieces as quickly as possible. And in this game, we saw black set a very nice trap after pawn takes d5. So our knight is now hanging. White is up two pawns, and they're right in our face. It looks very scary. But instead of just recapturing one of them right away, which maybe is the more solid approach, you can play bishop to f5. Just whatever. I don't care. Uh, my next move is potentially to go here, deliver some checks. I'm looking for an opportunity to take advantage of the queen. Uh, it doesn't work right away. So after white plays knight to c3, for example, uh, what are we going to do? It looks like... We can't play here because of this, although this is what happened in the game. We'll see what happens. Uh, and it would look like, hey, maybe we can go over here, attack the queen, attack the rook. But this is actually a mistake, not due to queen a4 check, but due to e4. So this is a mistake that black could make, where even if you are able to regain this rook, <laughs> I mean, the material is actually technically equal in this position. Your knight is a little bit trapped, and oh my gosh, look at that. So that's not the threats that black are making. We're, we're not really necessarily uh, making a direct uh, discovered attack against, the, a revealed attack against this queen. But instead, black did play 
bishop to b4 in this position. And I mean, at first sight, it's like, this is just a major patzer blunder. Uh, White is a particularly high rated player. He spots the tactic right away. Who's this guy? He doesn't have a rating. Queen the a4. And suddenly it's like, how are you going to defend this bishop? If you play knight to c6, I just, uh, I'll be able to take it. If you don't, I take your bishop. But this is exactly what Black played. Black played knight to c6, hanging the knight to the pawn, defending the bishop. And white fell for the bait. White took the knight. And now black is absolutely winning. This is uh, an amazing trap that is really cool against uh, the queen c2 line. And the winning move, drum roll, knight takes c3. And suddenly we are attacking the queen and there's none of these pieces that you're able to recapture. For example, if you take this knight, we take here check. You have to block with this guy. We're not interested in the rook. We're interested in the king. This would just be a checkmate. This is well understood. Instead, if you decide, hey, I'm going to take this. Well, guess what? The queen actually had an important responsibility on this diagonal. This is checkmate. <laughs> and the knight and the queen are coordinating for a mating attack. Now, this game actually ended in this position there was another game in a similar line i put this one in just because it was a little bit shorter where white tried to find a way to get out of this position and came up with queen to b3 okay if i can't capture anything my queen is under attack i play queen to b3 and now black has a lot of winning options like knight to a2 just super duper mega wins but one game saw a fantastic move here as well bishop to c2 <laughs> another move attacking the queen and black has three pieces hanging but white can't take them all and every single line is going to lead to issues now it's the bishop that is blocked to the queen so if you take the knight for example it's the bishop that's helping the queen deliver the checkmate the bishop is blocking the queen from the d1 square uh and again you just can't take anything so there's no time to take that there's no time to take this because you're getting checkmated and if you do take this for example now we have the opportunity to do something uh, that is a discovery that actually does work. And so knight to e4 basically forces you to go here, where after we recapture, either you give the queen up right away or you allow us to do this beautiful checkmate on the king. So I thought that was a fantastic one. Uh, one of the coolest traps that you can play in this opening. Let's have another. Uh, this is the Fajarowitz Gambit. And again, we're taking a look at queen to c2. This one was similar, but it has potentially one of the more common, more well-known traps in it. We are again taking a look at um, the queen to c2 line, but instead of d5 right away, in this game, it went bishop to b4. And instead of having a knight on c3, white put the knight on d2. So a little bit different, but uh, a lot of the same themes here kind of apply. And now after d5, I wanted to put this one in to show not what happens after this, but what does happen if they do decide to take on Passant. Well, well, in this game, we saw the same move by White. He wasn't interested in any of the material. He played bishop to f5. You know, I'm not worried about recapturing this guy. I want to defend my knight. And uh, potentially at some point, hey, maybe there's going to be some sort of discovered action. Certainly White feels a little bit uncomfortable uh, with the bishop hanging there, which is why the queen went to a4. However, this time when we play knight to c6, it's not even really a big deal um, because our knight's not hanging this time. There's no pawn on d5. White plays a3, and this is probably the losing move here in this position. Uh, we're seeing white getting punished. If white doesn't develop right away and try to get all the pieces out, it's very easy to get punished early on. But we've also seen that if white does castle, sometimes there's these crazy g5, g4, double bishop sacrifices that you got to worry about as well. So in this game, a3 is what was played. Uh, and now came knight to c5. This is kind of an important move to keep in mind in these positions. c5 is like a normal square for a knight to head back to, attacking the queen. And there's really only one, one square for the queen to go back to. I mean, the queen's going to go back to d1 and it's got to stay safe. However, white made a bit of a mistake here and got a little bit greedy and decided to throw this move in, probably expecting that black would just simply recapture this pawn. But now black has a winning move. So you can go ahead and pause and try to find this one as well. It's one of the most common themes you'll see in the normal Budapest. This is if you've ever played the Budapest with knight to g4, um, you'll probably recognize this as a theme right away. Instead of taking the pawn, black played here setting up a very nasty trap and white now needs to probably give up the queen to avoid the trap because if you do run away this is what happened in the game 
Black now gets to take advantage of the fact that the queen is on this e-file and deliver a smothered mate with knight to d3. So fantastic. It's kind of a must-know trap. Maybe this is a little bit more basic, but this is one that you need to know if you ever play chess. <laughs> the Budapest Gambit, but also chess. Hey, here's another one on the same theme. This is the Fajarowitz Gambit, and this time we'll be looking at knight to d2. This is the most popular way on Lee Chess in the Patser database, but also the Master database. Knight to d2 is one of the most popular ways uh, to continue. And again, there is a lot of different potential ways for black to play. You can always play bishop to b4. This is always an option available to you. You can probably trade this, but maybe knight to c5 would be a little bit more popular than that. Um, those are always available options. Black in this game played knight to c5. And after knight f3, Knight, F, uh, knight to c6, starting to put a little bit of pressure on this guy. It's worth noting, if ever b4 comes in these kinds of positions, you can always drop the knight back. And if they play a3, generally you're going to be playing with a5, trying to do some tricks here on the a file. And you're trying to get a structure where you can have this available for one of your knights. Uh, you create the c5 square. And then whether you're giving up a pawn or not, you can play d6 or not, you can sack or not. Uh, now you have knights that are able to head to the the c5 square, so at least you have some good squares for your pieces, although, you know, you are down a pawn. That's what happens when you play this gambit. Um, but if they don't play b4, you carry on. And in this game, white played b3, which I assumed was going to be like a big mistake. In general, I feel white ought to be trying to get castled a little bit quicker, but the computer didn't mind, so this is a fine move. b3, you're going to be playing bishop to b2. You're really going to make sure you took the pawn. White wants to make sure that he holds on to it. But now d6, black just says, I was never interested in the pawn in the first place. And queen to e7 was played. Black is saying, I am going to recapture your pawn. And uh, I now have sufficient <laughs> people defended. And uh-oh, you should be able to spot this one a mile away. Black to play and win. It's easy. Knight to d3. Double check smothered mate. So those are just a couple of fun games in the Fajaro with Scambits. Uh, I hope you guys do really like that. Let me know. Uh, subscribe. Bye. If you feel in the trap like a queen. No blunders, only sacrifice and see well, you may have to lose. Never be a chicken when you lose.